Hello everybody, what is up? Welcome back to the EWA channel and today we're going to do something a bit special. Today we're going to do a beginner guide on how to play with dwarves. So if this video is helpful for you, make sure to leave a like as well as subscribe to our channel. It would really, really help us out. The more likes we get, the more people we can reach. And of course, if you would like to see more faction guides, make sure to leave a comment on what faction gives you the hardest time. We already did one on Isengard and today we're going to do Dwarves, but I will be more than happy to do a faction of your choice. So let me know in the comments down below which faction would you like me to cover next and let's jump straight into it. Little bit about the Dwarven faction. Dwarves are probably one of the hardest faction to play as a beginner. Because of the lack of cav, the slowness and lacking the ability to spite on your opponent early in the game. But once you master your Dwarven skill, I promise you they can be one of the more enjoyable sides in BFME 2. So let's go through the Dwarven strength. Dwarven infantry is hands down the tankiest in the game. From the guardians to the axe throwers. Though they are lacking a bit of pace to use your dwarven infantry more effectively is moving them through the tunnel network system and then they are becoming the most mobile unit in the game if you use the tunnel system correctly tunnel system can be used defensively as well always make sure to leave one of each unit in the tunnel pikes versus cavalry axe throwers versus swordsmen and guardians versus pikes dwarven heroes who we are going to touch on later this video is one of dwarfs strengths as well although not a lot in numbers but each one has its unique purpose in the game for example glowing versus buildings dane who can provide leadership to your army and gimli <coughs> well the most broken hero in the game <laughs> Another strength the dwarves have is how tanky their buildings are. A level 3 dwarven barracks has the health of an unupgraded fortress. Yeah, you heard it right. <laughs> A technique that I like to use with dwarves basically is building a forward base with tons of healing wells or hearths as well as two level 3 barracks which not only can provide you with units quick can also shoot axes as well as making your opponent hate their life because they think you're taking the piss. But actually it's a really useful tactic. Dwarves weaknesses. We already touched a bit on the dwarven weaknesses but let me tell you some more stuff so you can be aware. Dwarven mobility is obviously a huge weakness when playing dwarves but tunnel network and I can't stress this one enough is the way to go offense defense and counter-attack using the tunnel is your only way to stay competitive another thing that dwarves are lacking is the traditional cavalry that each faction have but they do have a thing called battle wagons Upgrading the wagon can be a useful thing as well. Axe throwers are good versus buildings. Men of Dale are good versus units. Banner is good versus cav heroes as well as providing leadership. And the healing well is just if you want to be a massive knob. Oh yes, the most beautiful trio in the game, Dwarven Heroes. Definitely a Dwarven virtue in BFME 2. So let me tell you a bit about them. Glowing is probably one of the best early heroes you can get. Cheap and worth every penny or <coughs> gold. At level 1, Gloin get the slam ability, which is basically good against units more than buildings, but can be effective as well if used on buildings. At level 4, Gloin gets the shake foundation, which can destroy almost every building instantly beside the fortress, of course. Again, very good if you want to get a level 3 resource buildings or just a barracks. Good for Gloin level and for your PP. At level 10, I mean... King Dane is a great hero to move around with your army. But just at level 1, he provides leadership. At level 4 and 7, he get great power as well, coming in with the Mighty Rage, which makes your units faster. Stubborn Pride, which is basically a fear resistance. Oh, did I get the chance to tell you that he's got a pig? All in all, a must 
if you're going into a late game with him. Gimli, well, basically a one-man army, can provide leadership, nice addition of splash damage in 1.09 doesn't hurt his abilities as well, a leap attack which is very effective and probably the most important power of the Slayer ability, which Gimli get only at level 7. Very strong if you want to take down a hero or a building and indeed he can wreck an army all by himself. Dwarven PowerPoint Tree. The Dwarven PP Tree is indeed very strong. Between the three choices, most of the time I'll say go straight away for the rallying call as the best defense in the game is offense but you might find yourself in the middle of the game needing either heal or rebuild so don't be shy going for them as well dwarven reaches can be a game changer especially if your economy isn't doing well cloud break can stun enemy units for a couple of seconds since it's in the middle gives you the option to choose between the two big powers and honestly my favorite power is the undermine since in patch 1.09 version 2 you can summon it anywhere around the map without any vision though it need to be in some certain distance from your opponent fortress but for real it can lead to some devastating counter-attack put in Gimli Gloin and Dane two guardians and one pikeman and that's a GG for the fort the dwarven fortress dwarven fortress can provide you with a lot of helpful things so let's go through them real quick banners for only 400 gold will give allies near the fort 25% damage boost will reduce your hero cuts by 10% as well as his recruitment time by 10% and reduce builder cost by 20%. The second upgrade is the siege kegs and honestly before making the video I never realized how good they are. For only 650 gold it will heal your units as well as replenish them every 6.5 seconds. Third upgrade is the masterwork munitions which basically acts as fire arrows upgrades just for dwarves. Fourth upgrade is the oil casks. It's just another way to protect your fortress if things things go wrong. Fifth upgrade is the Dwarven Stonework which basically make your fort a lot more tankier and allows you to go to the last and final Dwarven upgrade, the Mighty Catapult. <laughs> yeah. And now let's go to a game simulator. Yay! Go ahead and build two tunnels on the edge of your fortress floor. Both tunnels need to be at least 97% or more. Once your builder finished to build the tunnels, you need to act quick. Order one builder to build the barracks and send the other to your enemy base. Sounds bold, but hear me out. The best way to play with dwarves it's to use your builders as a way to move around your units once your barracks is done building and the second builder is on his way to the enemy base straight away click on one guardian battalion to come build the tunnel preferably out of your opponent's vision and build another guardian battalion once you got both in the tunnel choose the running call from your powerpoint tree and go for every building you see Put the pressure on him never forgetting to expand on your side of the map because your opponent is so occupied with your first attack as well as pumping them guardians if needed you can play more aggressive with your builder building around multiple tunnels in your opponent's side so if you lose one you always have another one and you can keep him on guessing which way you are coming from if you did every step right your opponent should be crippled, you should have enough for Gloin, and once Gloin gets his level 4, it's pretty much a GG. So wait for your next rallying call and show him how big your Dwarven PP is. <laughs> Late game. Late game with Dwarves, it's pretty much the same as with every other faction. But here are some key points. Upgraded units are really important as well as upgrading your buildings like barracks or whatever you can. And high level heroes, the Shadowhammer from Gloin, Summon of the Royal Guard from King Dane, or Gimli Slayer can all change a game. A nice way to finish a late game is the Undermine Earthquake combination. Obviously, use the Earthquake first to get rid of any tower and army that protects your opponent base, then charge in with the beards and axes 
So yeah guys, that was the Dwarven tutorial of the EWA channel. Hopefully it helped some of you guys out there and was straight to the point. Once again, don't forget to subscribe as well as liking the video. I put a lot of effort into those kind of videos. So a like would help me know that someone out there is enjoying them. So yeah, it's been your boy Axel. Stay safe, stay young. And until next time, peace.